Price just below 300 euros, it does 192 kHz 24 bit, has a volume control and an analog input, all in a tiny elegant housing. I recently reviewed the Advanced Paris Playstream A7 streaming amplifier and on returning it to the Dutch distributor I noticed two very affordable streamers. In this video the review of the more expensive of the two. The WTX Stream Pro can be connected over analog RCA cables to an amplifier that drives a set of loudspeakers. It also needs to be connected to your home network over either a network cable or 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi using the B, G or N standard. Now you can play streaming services like Deezer, iHeartRadio, Napster, Cobus, Spotify Premium, Tidal and TuneIn. Some of these are subscription based. If you want to play music from your computer it needs to be connected to your network too have a DLA or UPnP AV server program running and be switched on. The same goes for a NAS. The infrared remote has buttons for volume control, play, pause, skip back, skip forward and standby. Choosing music, making playlists and the like is done using a smartphone or tablet. Free apps are available for iOS and Android. The analog input allows you to connect for instance the analog output of a TV, game console or even FM tuner. When using an integrated amplifier it's handier to connect these directly to the amplifier but if you use a power amplifier or active speakers it is a useful feature. Another option is to connect the digital output of the WTX Stream Pro to the digital input of an AV receiver or amplifier with built in DAC if that is of higher quality than the DAC inside the WTX Stream Pro. In this case the analog input is no longer usable, but then analog sources can be connected directly to the receiver or amplifier. The design of this tiny streamer is true to the design language of Advanced Paris in that it has a polycarbonate front with blue LEDs and aluminium buttons. The rest of the housing is of sturdy metal. It measures 131 by 42 by 113 mm and weighs about half a kilo. The front holds the standby button, an infrared sensor, three blue LEDs that indicate what source is selected, the source selector itself and a 3.5 mm headphone socket. On the rear we find a mini USB port to connect the supplied switch mode wallboard power supply to a connector for the optional Bluetooth dongle, a WPS button for connecting to your Wi-Fi base station, a SPDIF digital output, a Toslink digital output, a USB port for connecting a memory stick holding music to, the Wi-Fi antenna, the network socket, the analog line outputs and the analog line inputs. Opening the cabinet shows a very crowded inside with the LinkPlay A31 streamer module piggyback on the main board. It is identical to the streamer module used in the PlayStream A7. A second small board holds the interface for the Bluetooth dongle. When we remove these two boards we see the Sirius Logic interface chip that handles the incoming digital audio from the streaming module the VM Silicon ARM Cortex M3 processor for system control, the Walsam WM8740 DAC chip and the AKM AK4113VF interface chip that handles the outgoing digital audio. About any PCM format up to 24 bit 192 kHz is supported. WAF, AIFF, FLAC, Apple Lossless, AAC, AAC+, APE, Real Audio, MP3, WMA and AUG. The standard operation is as DLA renderer but it also works as an AirPlay renderer. As AirPlay renderer the sending device, for instance an iPhone, sends a music stream to the WTX Stream Pro that performs the decrypting and plays it back over the analog or digital outputs. AirPlay is an Apple protocol that uses lossless compression to keep the load in the Wi-Fi network as low as possible and encrypting 
to avoid problems with copyright owners that otherwise might consider it to be broadcasting. It is good to realize that both work without any damage to the audio bits. The only limitation is that 48 kHz is the highest sampling rate that is supported by AirPlay. DNLA works differently. Here a program on a computer or NAS indexes the music and offers several lists of metadata to the controller. Nowadays the controller usually is a smartphone or tablet but there have been dedicated devices as well that still work today. Depending on the server program used and its settings those lists can vary. Limited server software only offers lists of artists, albums, tracks and genre. This is often the case with DNA server programs that also do video and photos. For music we might also want a list of composers, directors, release dates and so on. These lists can be found in the better DNA server programs. I like Minimserver which only does music, so no video, no photos. It already offers lists like director and you can add or alter list types if you are a bit handy with computers. After the, the DNA server has indexed all music files, the controller, being the app on your smartphone, reads in these lists and then you choose on a list, for instance album names, to browse the music you want. If you then select a track or album, the server sends the audio data plus some metadata to the DNA renderer. In this case that's the WTX Stream Pro. The metadata normally comprises artist, album name, track number, track name and album art and can be displayed on the renderer screen if present. The WTX Stream Pro does not have a display, which is, to me is no problem since the same information is shown on the smartphone or tablet you use as controller. When you open the app it searches for advanced Paris streaming products and when found it checks for updates. If an update is available, you will be asked if it should be installed. If not, you are presented with the advanced Paris streamers in your network. I also borrowed the tiny WTX micro streamer to see how multi-room and party mode works, which was fine. But let's select the WTX Stream Pro for now, after which a play screen appears. Let's go to the input screen where we see the available sources. Here you can choose from the sources I mentioned earlier. The app is in portrait mode only, which is fine on an iPhone, but often not on an iPad. Let's first see how to access the music on a computer or NAS and select Home Music Share. Let's go to SynAT, the simple Synology DS119J NAS that runs Minimserver. Let's select Album and let's select Mudlark by Leo Kotka. From here I can play all tracks or any track. Let's go back to the input menu and go for the highway streaming service title, select My Music, go to Artist and select my favorite rock singer Anouk. After selecting Michel from the album Urban Solitude, the track starts playing and the play screen appears showing a rather slow revolving vinyl record with label. Tapping the playlist button shows what music will be played next. Let's show you the streaming services you can add. As you can see I have most services active, only Ximalaya and QQFM are switched off. Normal users, as in non-reviewers, will have only two or three services active. For instance I hear radio, VTuner and Tidal. It's not the most impressive app, but it gets the job done and will suffice for most users. By the way, sometimes the term UPnP AV is used in documentation. It stands for Universal Plug and Play Audio Visual. In practice it works exactly the same as DNLA, so you can use a UPnP AV server program as well. This is where it really gets interesting, for the sound quality is clearly higher than the price if you catch my drift. The first thing to notice is the impressive sound stage that exceeds that of streamers costing a third more. To me that's enormously important since it's more emerging hearing the acoustic environment. The lows go deep and have a fair amount of texture. Mids and highs are more in line with the better alternatives in this class. 
That can be improved by replacing the power supply with an audiophile power supply. It cleans up the high somewhat and increases the resolution in the mids. I use the S-Booster BOTW PMP first generation, although the Audiophonics or iFi power supplies would be more appropriate price wise. I rate it top of my setup 3 or even on the lower end of my setup 2. Used with an Audiophile power supply even somewhat higher. With the Advanced Paris WTX Stream Pro you buy a good functioning streaming solution. It will work with many streaming services, Airplay and your own DNA server. More important though is that sound quality that really surprised me. I sometimes get questions like is that 500 euro DAC just as good as that 1000 euro DAC? If I have reviewed it, that's most unlikely for I only try to review equipment that performs well in its price category. There's no point in spending a lot of production time on products you shouldn't buy. But some products stick out. The Advanced Paris WTX Stream Pro is such a product. So it's not as good as a 600 euro product, but it sounds as good or better than say a 450 euro product. That brings us to the end of this video. There will be a next one coming Friday at 5 pm Central European time, Dio Volente. Since you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I have been blessed with some royal donations this week. Which is fine, since it made up a bit for the loss on advertisement money coming from YouTube due to COVID-19. So, a Big hand to my royal supporters. If you like to support my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you on the next show or on thehbproject.com. And as always, whatever you do, enjoy the music and keep safe.